Skull, 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 Skull. Skull Crushers, we crush the Skull. For this game to get going. Now, before we get into it, if you're new to the channel and you like the content, make sure you like. More importantly, make sure you subscribe for Eagles Daily Content, NFL Content. We will be streaming Eagles Vikings tonight. And if you've been subscribed for a while, you know the deal. Just double check. Double moonwalk check. Make sure you're still subscribed. Tonight is the night of nights. Now, I gotta say this. If... Jonathan Gannon poops the bed. If he stinks it up, I want his ass out of here. Okay, I'm not playing. I don't need to see anything more than what I saw last year and I saw after the first game. This man better be ready. You better get pressure. You better get pressure on Kirk Cousins or you're going to have a problem. We're going to have a problem. Because you know why? If you rattle Kirk Cousins early in a game, especially even if you don't rattle him later in the game, it screws this guy up the whole entire game. But you got to get to him. So they better find, figure a way to use Redick. They better figure a way to generate pressure. I don't want to see our cornerbacks eight yards off, sitting there waiting uh, for, you know, the passes underneath. Because what do they do? They, they play eight yards back, then he goes back. Two seconds, he throws a six-yard pass, turns up, maybe he drags, the receiver drags a guy eight or nine yards. You, they'll do that all day to us. I want, I want you, I want the Eagles to press. I want them to, to bring these corners up. I want them to bring some heat. And I want them to knock Kirk Cousins around, get him off track, get his jersey dirty. The key, and, and the way you know whether it's going right, is if Kirk Cousins, we're like, in the second quarter, in the third quarter, and his jersey's clean, meaning you know he hasn't been hit to the ground, he hasn't been tackled because he's been able to stand in the pocket all day, and he's got a clean jersey. We're doing it wrong. It's something wrong. And my only my only fear in this game, really, is Jonathan Gannon. Is what he's going to do? How is he going to play the Minnesota Vikings? That is my biggest fear. If you take if if you told me. He's going to play and utilize the talent the right way. I think the Eagles would have no problem winning. But he didn't do that against Detroit, and it absolutely killed us. It killed us. It just did. So he's got to get He's got to get it together. He just does, okay? And and we'll see, you know? And we'll see how they utilize just, you know, how, how they go up against Justin Jefferson. I don't mind double teams on Justin Jefferson. I don't mind taking Darius Slay or Bradbury, whoever you think, but probably Darius Slate, and let him just follow Justin Jefferson all around. I don't mind pressing Justin Jefferson and bringing some heat to Kirk Cousins. Like, you got to you gotta do it. And, and here's the other thing. There's so much talk, so much talk on Justin Jefferson, and for good cause, and, and for the right reasons. But what about Dalvin Cook? The Eagles did a horrible job against DeAndre Swift last week. Last year... The Eagles did a horrible job at, against the run at times. You gotta play the run a lot better. Dalvin Cook has to be has to be limited. He does. And one way I'm gonna do that, Jordan Davis needs more snaps. Okay, when Jordan Davis was on the field versus the Detroit Lions, two and a half yards a carry. When he wasn't on the field, Detroit averaged ten yards a carry. That's quite a difference, okay? That is quite a gigantic difference. So I need to see the Eagles play the run better, get pressure on Kirk Cousins, and I think that will help to limit and neutralize Justin Jefferson. Um, although, I, you know, I think he'll get his yards, but if you could keep him out of the end zone things like that, it'll be great. I want an aggressive defense. I want him to come out. Take advantage that you're at home. It's a home opener. The fans are hyped. It's Monday night. It should, you know, use that energy to your advantage. Uh, I thought that at times Nick under Nick Sirianni, we didn't do that. Even times under Doug, we, we didn't use the home field advantage 
to to our advantage, uh, especially the last few years, I would say, with Doug. Um, and if they do that on defense, I, I think that they'll control this game. Offensively, you know, it's so interesting to me because people complain about Jalen Hurts, Jalen Hurts, Jalen Hurts, that he's not a good enough thrower, he doesn't have strong enough arm, all this stuff. And you look at the Detroit game versus Washington yesterday. Uh, Detroit, they blitzed the crap out of Carson, especially in the first half, and they were beating the crap out of him. Hutchinson, I think, had three sacks. Uh, he couldn't do anything. Uh... Jalen Hurts' legs saved us, okay? So you always want a guy, especially that has the abilities that Jalen Hurts has, to use it. Just be smart about it. I, I, I would prefer that he runs when plays break down or he's got to avoid, you know, getting a sack more so than design stuff. But they're going to use Hurts how they're going to use Hurts. I, I think that'll be fine. And uh, I think his legs are going to drive Minnesota up a wall. You can run on Minnesota. I think I think I think Green Bay, I want to say they averaged like six yards a carry against the Vikings last week. Um the Eagles will be able to run the ball. Miles Sanders, Boss of Scott, you know, uh, Kenneth Gainwell. Uh, I don't know if they'll play Sermon or not. Um Jalen Hurts. But they should be able to to beat them with the run. I think they'll be able to frustrate that defensive line with Jalen Hurts' legs. And I expect Jalen Hurts to have a good day throwing. I'm, I'm going to say this. He's going to throw over 300 yards tonight, and he's going to have throw for two touchdowns. I really think so. They're going to be focusing on A.J. Brown, A.J. Brown, A.J. Brown. I think Devontae Smith is going to have a big game. I think Devontae Smith is going to have a monster game. I think Dallas Goddard is going to have a big game. I do. And you know what? I think I think it's going to be good. I, I think that Smith leads the team with receptions. I think... A.J. Brown gets the touchdowns, and Goddard's going to do a little bit of both. But I think that if you go out, you run the game, you run the ball, Hurts is going to get out. I think he's going to frustrate that defense with his legs, and I think he's going to be able to make some throws. I think you're going to see Jalen Hurts have a good game. I'm feeling really good about this game. I feel really confident. Kirk Cousins... 2-9 and nine on Monday Night Football. I think that's a great thing. Or in, I don't know if it was Monday Night or uh, Primetime Television. But either way, it's not very good. Okay? It's not very good. So I, I feel good about today. And I still think this is going to be a tight game. I don't think it's going to be quite as high scoring as many people think. But it's going to come down to the late fourth quarter. Fumble by Jalen Rager. How awesome. Seriously. How awesome would that be if the Vikings lose because Jalen Rager fumbles the ball? That would be awesome. Now, if the Eagles win that game, it's going to take us to 2-0. and We'll be tied at first place with the New York Giants. Like I said in my video last night, the Giants are the biggest threat to the Eagles as of right now, week two. I think that changes if the Cowboys beat the Giants next week. Um... And if the Eagles lose, they'll go to 1-1 one -one with Washington and Dallas, and Giants will be alone, it's hard to believe, would be alone in first place. And the Eagles will have a huge showdown with Carson Wentz, a guy who's saying that it's just another game. You know, that, I hate that. Just be honest, dude. You know, just seriously, Carson. Just say, yeah, it's a big game. It's the Eagles, man. God, Howie Roseman was yelling at me in front of my wife, treat me like nothing as I was throwing up my guts, puking into a toilet because I couldn't see, God damn it! And I'm sitting there, and I'm sorry, I curse, I just said a bad word, sorry. But, you know, I'm throwing up, my insides are out, and here you go, Carson Wentz, it's disgusting, it's disgusting, you know, and... And Howie Roseman is yelling at him. He's got his Napoleon hat on. He's got his pocket protector. He's, he's, he's done his calculations of how many plays and snaps Carson Wentz needs. Carson's refusing to go back out there. This is a this is an HBO TV series coming out. I'm writing it for HBO. It's going to be an HBO TV series. It's going to be about a quarterback who gets sick and, and gets cursed out in front of his wife while she's crying in a playoff game. Then he tries to hire an assassin. Uh, from the mafia to kill the GM, but because he has a concussion, he gives instead of the GM's name, he gives his name, and then they're trying to kill him. So it's gonna be crazy. It's gonna be HBO show. It's coming soon, coming soon. But all I can say is Carson Wentz next week. But before we get into Carson, it's all about Minnesota. The Eagles go two and zero. Then they go into that Washington game 2-0, and, 
And uh, I think I think you have a good chance because you have Washington, then you have Jacksonville Jaguars coming up. I think you have a great opportunity to get to Forno. We're going to find out. Uh, I will be live probably most likely if as long as I can. Some point early afternoon for me. Um, mid-afternoon for a lot of you guys. Uh, you know, just to talk game because I'm going to be thinking about what everybody else is thinking about this game tonight. With that said, take care. Talk to you later, of course. Don't be a dingbat. Remember, it's how we vision. We're all just living in it. Oh my God, time is going so slow. It is so slow. I need this game to get here. I need this game to get here. And you know what I'm going to do, right? First play of the game. Play action. Pump fake. Go to go to boom. 